Mixing with Mike, plugin of the week is the SoftTube Transient Shaper. This is kind of a cool plugin that um, sort of employs some uh, dynamic style processing, although uh, if you look at the manual for the transient shaper by SoftTube, they don't really call it that, although it, it, it exhibits many of the characteristics. And um, their explanation for this is kind of simple, and uh, and I will kind of get into that. But let me first talk about the whole idea of the transient shaper how it, um, and what it, it is basically useful for. So essentially what we have is two forms of processing that are built in. We have a punch processing which primarily focuses on the transient. So the idea here of the transient shaper is that we can either um, add to, exaggerate transients, or um, uh, tone them down. And with a, a few uh, different selections here, we can decide where exactly that we want that to happen. Also, um, we have a sustain um, characteristic here. So when you look at any sound or any instrument, it basically comes across as a, uh, you'll, you'll get what's called an ADSR cycle, right? So the attack, the initial decay, the sustain, and the release. And so this sustain is controlling that sustain portion of the sound. So in other words, when you're actually working with any sound, um, it will have a certain characteristic, a certain shape that is the transient, how sharp it is or how dull it is, and um, an initial decay before the actual um, um, resonance or, or uh, sustain of the note uh, occurs, and then you'll have some form of a decay. And what we're doing is we're controlling those characteristics. So what people will do with compression, compressors, and one of the ways that you can really work with compressors is by controlling the attack and release times, you're effectively working on how you affect or don't affect the transient and how you affect the sustained signal. Okay, so there's some uh, relevance that comes along with this. So just like this with the sustain, we can control the sustain high, uh, full band, or low frequencies. And with the punch, we can also, for the transient side of things, we can control high frequencies, the full bandwidth, or the low frequencies. So we have some control over where the punch or the transient attack and the sustain are actually being affected. So this will change based on the instrument that we apply it to. There's also a crossover network. So as you're working with lower high frequencies, it'll follow the crossover network selection that you have set here. We have some gain change meters. So this will either show gain reduction or added gain, depending upon whether you're going plus and minus with the sustain or punch. Um, you got the crossover here, you have an output level, and then you could decide to either clip um, or sort of soft limit the output. So um, when clipping, you'll get a little bit more of an edgy kind of character. So um, let's go through some instruments and kind of put it through some um, practical steps so you can kind of see how you would use this. So like one of the things that the first thing that I'm going to start with is on this particular track is a kick drum. And this kick drum has a lot of sustain to it and, and it lacks a little bit of punch. And it also has some bleed from other instrumentation in here. So what I would probably want to do, first of all, is control the low end or the amount of sustain just so I can tone it down. So rather than gating it, what I can do is I can sort of find a, find a frequency area down here. And if I, right, so that would be adding sustain. So now if I take it away, so really pretty simple, right? I can exaggerate it to find out what area here within the crossover network is over sustaining and then I can how much I want to control it. So I can choke it almost like a gate but only on the lower frequencies. And I can also do it wideband. Now if I do that it sort of ignores this and I'm getting full frequency. which can affect more full frequencies, or I can tone down bleed. But what I'm gonna do here is to kind of unmuddy this up. I'm gonna use this to, to do this. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the rest of this and I'm gonna put on a little bit of attack. So I'm gonna switch this over to the high frequency here and add a little punch.
So maybe I'm going to shift this up a little bit. So you can hear how we can control this. I can make this, the attack a little more aggressive by going to a fast setting on the punch or make it softer with the slow setting. Now this is not like a really aggressive song. So I think I'll just start at least with this here and use this as sort of a starting point. So we could see here, we just took a little bit of the shape of the kick drum and kind of thrown something on it. So this is kind of cool. It's a very cool kind of tool. Now the reason why they don't call it a compressor is that compressors usually have like some form of a fixed threshold or a set threshold or like a threshold control. And that's not what this is. So the sustained control is not a threshold control or the punch control. So, um, so it's like if the best probably way to explain it would be a sort of like an adaptive threshold. So in other words, it's looking at the signal and it's not looking for level characteristics as much as it is peak or transient characteristics versus sustaining characteristics at whatever level that they're at. And then it's applying the processing according to the crossover settings and the um, the frequency selections, et cetera, and fast and slow attack settings that you create here. So this is a kind of a cool thing um, that can help to shape and control certain aspects of a sound. So let's take a snare. So if we wanted to add more body into this, we could actually I can add a, sort of dynamically. Now also adding a lot of bleed. <laughs> so this may not be the best choice here. In fact, what I really want to do here is actually kind of tone back on this a little bit. Or I could cut back on some of the, the high frequency some of the symbol leakage. And then what I'll do here is I'll take this and I'll kind of work on the high frequencies for the snap. So what I'm simultaneously doing here is I'm, I'm applying the high frequencies to the attack and then taking them away from the sustain to kind of cut down on the bleed. So I can soften that so it's not so a little bit ticky there for this type of sound and given the other processing that I have. So I cleaned up the sound effectively here. So let's move on to the to the overheads and, and see how we can use this with the overheads. Here's another example of where I can use this to sort of keep the symbols from being overbearing. But add a little bit of presence. And let's kind of go to the uh, like So I can keep symbols from being a little bit too brash. Well, still preserving some of the transient attacks. Let's listen to. And let's start with these three guys here and then. So it's without. So we'll kind of back off a little bit on this and try to be a little bit more musical with it. So a really cool way of kind of cleaning up like a lot of bleed, like you hear the bla the um, the bass and the guitars and the vocal kind of lingering in in the background from this performance. Let's show how we can use it on the bass. So on a bass, I may want to get in 
a little bit more presence in the attack here. So I'll go with a slow setting. So if, if the transient peak is very sharp, like in drums, I might be uh, more inclined to go with fast, meaning that it reacts faster, um, uh, the processing. Uh, either reacts faster or reacts slower, or slower. So if you, and it's sort of a combination of not just the attack time, but the release time of a compressor. So like how wide of an area is sort of affected. So if you have a fast attack, it also has like a very short period where it's acting, which gives it a little bit more of a pokey kind of nature. Whereas if you go with a slower transient, then it's going to cover a broader range. So the transient attack on a bass or, or a guitar or something like that, or a vocal is going to be a bit softer and and uh, last longer than the attack like on a triangle or a cowbell or a clave or a snare drum or something which has a much sharper transient. So you would adjust the settings accordingly. So here, let's just kind of take this and go with the high frequency first, and let's just see if I can if I can add a little bit of um bite to it. So if I wanted to kind of demud this a little bit, I could also take like the lower frequency. I'm exaggerating it here. So it's kind of lessening the sustain of the bass. So it's a little muddy, less muddy. So I'm working with the attack here. So let's listen to this in the context of the drums. And that's here with all of these guys together. So let's uh, let's kind of add in like a, a quick guitar and show you how you can use the. Well, actually, let's kind of let's skip over. Um, now let's actually go to the guitar here for a second. So let's just kind of. So maybe I'll go with a little bit more of a wide frequency attack on the guitar. Set that crossover so clear up a little bit of mud from this. And I'd probably do a similar type of thing here with this with this guitar here. So let me just kind of step back here. So I can get the transient sort of full frequency to kind of keep it a little bit warmer, but cut back a little bit on the sustain to open up the sound a little bit. So let's take these two guys and put them into a little bit of a... And now let's add it in with the rest of the guys here. This is bypassing all of them. Now let's do something with the vocal here, um, just to kind of give it, uh, to kind of wrap this up and uh, and get into some of this. Just so I'm gonna kind of clear up some of these extra um, guitars and instruments here, just so I can uh, kind of work with this a little bit more easily. So in this case, what I wanna do here with the vocal is I'm gonna add in, I wanna put some air in the vocal. So what there's I'm, music in your voice. So I wanna put sustain in the air, right? A song so soft and sweet that I had no choice, my love. I'm praying for a whisper and my So here I get the boxiness the sound or the marbliness of it. So I'm sitting here waiting by the phone. 
Talk to me, baby. I don't want to be wrong. So I got to hold on here for a second, kind of reset the brain cells a little bit. So I have it set to a higher frequency over here. And then now there's music in your voice. I can add this. I can even go up higher here. A song so soft and sweet that I had no choice, my love. I'm praying for a whisper in my ear, just the sound to make it clear. So I can add like a really nice sustain here on this. And if I wanted to kind of make the vocal just kind of uh, tighten it up a little bit, maybe kind of take away um, a little bit of the warmth, I can also do that here. There's music in your voice. A song so soft and sweet that I had no choice, my love. Which really opens up and adds like a nice openness. It's really, really cool the, with the way that this is kind of laid out. So this is now affecting a lot of other frequencies here. So I had to be careful about this, just kind of looking at this. Although it's uh, just on the attack. Actually, I can't do both. I'm actually thinking of this a little bit backwards. That's a bit on the, that's on the attack side. So I think I'm just going to kind of leave that alone and um, not so much... Uh, work with the low end let's just kind of work with the air over the top on this and maybe go to like a soft output there's music in your voice okay so let's listen to this in the context of the track there's music in your voice a song so soft and sweet that i had no choice my love this is without i'm praying for a whisper in my ear just the sound to make it clear So I'm sitting here waiting by the phone Talk to me baby, I don't want to be wrong Talk to me baby, what's the use in taking so long I will be waiting for you to come on home So talk to me baby, tell me that I'm not And in the safety of my arms you can hide my love. So very, very cool because it actually when when you work with it and and like I'm trying to do this in as a musical way as possible, I can really, really open up the mix. So this is a mix that you know has already a lot of processing in it and what i've been able to do here is to kind of tone down on some of the bleed open up um uh, uh control some of the sustain characteristics which is a little bit harder to do in uh in a just uh, straight out uh compressor um type of situation and uh really open up um the sound of the mix and kind of bring some air in when necessary so the way that those controls um, kind of work here in the transient shaper is very cool in that it works on the sustain and the attack characteristics is independent controls. Um, really adds a lot of power to it. And because it's a dynamic um, uh, way, it's dynamically interacting with the sound and, and the source signal as it's coming in and it's not level dependent, um, it becomes uh, that much more of, a, uh, of an effective musical tool. So really powerful one. Uh, great, uh, great tool. Uh, Softube uh, Transient Shaper. Uh, check it out and uh, uh, put it on a mix. I think you'll like it.